Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It has been a couple of weeks since I have done a video. I won't lie, client work got really out of hand last couple of weeks. I had to work on my weekends, which is usually when I do my YouTube videos and we went to Hamilton Island for a holiday, a very much needed holiday. Um, if you haven't been to Hamilton Island, it's amazing, it's paradise just go. Um, but without further ado, let's get stuck into today's video. I am going to walk you through another cosmetic product photography tutorial uh, with my client Pony Cosmetics so that you can get some ideas if you have any makeup or even skincare products that you have to shoot. Um, when it comes to doing cosmetics, I really love to keep things as simple and as minimal as possible because I just think the products usually speak for themselves and too many props can be too busy and overwhelming, but it really depends on the brand and how creative you wanna get. Now, if you're new here, hi, I'm Amanda. I am a brand photographer based in Brisbane, Australia, and I've been in this industry for three years now, and I'm actually coming up to my two year anniversary working full time in my business. And my fiance, Alistair, he just went full time literally a week ago in the business. He's a videographer, so he does all the video work for our clients. And hopefully I can be showing you guys more video stuff on YouTube and inside my course, Become a Brand Photographer in 2021. So maybe he'll join me on a couple of videos. I'll try and convince him. If you love this kind of content, you wanna go check out my other videos, don't forget to subscribe and go and follow me over on Instagram at Amanda Campianu. I share more behind the scenes, tips and tricks, more of my daily life, more of my personal life on my Instagram as well. If you wanna to get to know me a little more over there. But let's get stuck into the video now. I'm gonna show you the first scene that I'm gonna set up. Let's do it. Now to set the scene, I am gonna be showing you my lighting setup I'm gonna be using for all these photos. I always get asked, oh Amanda, can you share you know, how you lit the scene? And I guess for me, it's pretty much the same for nearly all of my photos actually. I might change it up with some RGB lights. I might just use one light sometimes. I might play with shadows, but pretty much I have one light on the right hand side of my scene and one light on the left hand side of my scene. One light might have a soft box, the other light may not have a soft box. It really depends on what I'm looking at and what I think is gonna look good. So on the right here, I have my Godox FV150 and on the left, I have my Godox SL60W. Now, I also get asked the question why I prefer using continuous light and not strobe light. And I just wanna say first off that there's no rules when it comes to lighting for product photography. Sure, there might be guidelines and you know standard things in the industry, but there's no right and wrong and it's really all down to personal preference. Because we do a lot of video work as well, we started off with a continuous light. That was our first investment because we could use it for photo and video. The FV150 is actually a continuous and strobe light all in one. I don't use the strobe function. I'm actually not too familiar with using strobes. I have used them, but I much prefer to be able to see my scene for what it is, especially because I work with shadows a lot. That is my personal preference. So if you want to experiment with continuous or strobe, experiment and find out which one you love working with more, but there's no right or wrong. So for my first scene, I'm using this white background. It's a non-reflective paper roll from Hypop. And we just got three products that we're using today and that we've got a style. So I am only using one other prop. This is like a little pink mirror. I got it from Kmart, so cheap. And I'm just going to pop them all into a line. I'm gonna take the wand. For any like mascara or lip ones, I always love to take the wand out of the tub so that you can see how it looks. And then I'm gonna do, pop that on an angle for oh, added interest, like that. And then this one here, again, I'm gonna take the top off. Just 
pop that up and then place that there. Now I'm gonna be putting the mirror round about there. Now we have an issue with this mirror. Um, I kind of want to have it like this and obviously you can see the back of my studio, which is not ideal. So we're gonna do a little trick with this. Okay, so for this scene, I have two items. I've got a pink piece of cardboard and a white piece of foam board. Um, now, obviously my camera's on a tripod, so usually I would have my camera on a tripod right here, but at the moment I'm talking to you. Um, so I'm just gonna show you how I would hold these up to then take the photo. So to deal with the mirror reflection, I am wanting to use a pink piece of cardboard to block the background of my studio. So really all I'm doing is this. My camera is probably gonna be somewhere around here and all I need to do is position that so that it covers that mirror reflection. And basically while I hold that, you can use C-stands, anything else to hold these things in place. Sometimes I just use my hands because it's easier. And then you'll notice on the background of this image here, there is a shadow coming through on the background. That shadow is created using this whiteboard and harsh light. Now there's a couple of different effects that you can create using this shadow. You can have something that's really harsh over your entire scene. You can have it really harsh on just the background. Um, otherwise, you can create a little bit of a soft gradient of shadow by just moving your board up and down and finding that sweet spot. So it really depends on what kind of look, whether it's hard or soft, that you're after for your background and your shadow. All right, let's get on to our next scene and we're doing a little bit of a flat lay using these brow pencils here. So if you are dealing with anything like a mascara, brow pencil, this is a really good little composition to use. Um, okay, so let's just start styling. Now, blue tack is gonna be your best friend doing this because it holds everything in place. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take out the wands and I'm just gonna place it about there. And with this photo, I'm not using any other props. All I'm gonna do is use the products because it's gonna help them stand out much more. I'm gonna take that lid off and then I'm going to pop that there, but we need a little bit of blue tack. Okay, so there we have it. So as you can see, this kind of setup, it can be quite fiddly, but it looks really effective, especially if you are working with harsh shadows as well. It gives it more dimension to the image and we just don't need these lids in the frame here. Um, but if you're working with multiple products, this is a really fun little composition to try and it looks really effective. Okay, so for this next scene, I'm gonna be showing you how I create this image right here. And you'll notice there's a cool little lighting effect on the background. So I'm gonna show you how you can achieve this. So as you can see, my lighting setup is still the same and I've just replaced that white backdrop with a pink one. This is still non-reflective paper. So let's get stuck into the styling. All right, so firstly, let's set this scene here and style it. So I'm gonna be attempting to stack this one on top of these two. I'm gonna try and do something like that. And then this one has to go up here. Now, I do have this little acrylic block that I think I'm gonna use to just try and hold this and then another little acrylic block for more height and i'm going to use some sticky tape to help keep this in place so i'm thinking kind of has to go like there and we're just going to move that a little bit this way so that you can't actually see that block at the back and it kind of looks like it's just floating on top. 
So this is a really fun way to style multiple compacts if you've got them. Stack them on top of each other. All right, now for the little lighting trick that we're gonna do to add a bit more interest to this image. Okay, so to achieve the lighting trick, we are gonna be using a piece of silver reflective card. Now, because I have my light on the right-hand side with no soft box, I'm gonna be using this on the left-hand side to create my reflections. So all I'm gonna be doing is really just moving it around. And you can see the different effects that this can create. It's really cool and it just adds a lot more interest into the shot. Now you could even create a cool little stop motion just using the lights and moving the light around. And that's all you do. Okay, so for this last scene, I'm gonna be showing you how I create this photo right here. And the creative concept behind this one is because this product that we're shooting is called the Waterproof Mainstain. Now I'm playing on the concept of it being waterproof. So I want to show these products inside water. So that's another cool concept that you could do too, is that if you have any cosmetic products that are labeled as waterproof, then you can play with your water splashes. Uh, so let's get down to the styling. So I've got my product styled in my acrylic tray here. This is a waterproof acrylic tray as well. Now, if you wanna know where I got this from, you will need to be a student inside my course, become a brand photographer, as this is where I give away all my suppliers, my manufacturers, where I get all my props from, um, as I spend a lot of time researching and finding out where I can source things from. So this is only reserved for my students, but if you wanna check out my course, go to the description below and there is a link there for you. Um, but let's get down to making the water splash. Okay, so what you'll need for this kind of scene is a glass of water or a water bottle. Your camera will need to be on a tripod and you'll have to put your camera on burst mode as well because that way you can capture the perfect water shot. So what we're gonna be doing is, we've got our focus on the products. And I'm gonna be pouring from my left because then my shadow won't get in the way if I pour on the right, because I've got harsh light coming in onto my scene. And I've got my shutter speed on 500 and my f-stop on four. And we're just gonna go for it. So you might wanna do that a few times to get that perfect water shot. Depending on how large your tray is, you might wanna be using a glass tray, it could be an acrylic tray, something that is obviously clear. Uh, you might wanna fill it up first with a little bit of water um, so that it looks more full and then proceed to get the shot by pouring more water in after that. But it depends on what kind of look you're after. Now you'll notice in this image here as well, I have added some sparkles into the water and I've done this because I think it adds a bit more interest to the image and because the brand, it does have that magical flair about it, um, this was the perfect addition for this photo. And if you wanna know how to do this, I will be doing a tutorial for my students inside Become a Brand Photographer on how to add these kinds of overlays to your photos. They can be really fun. It doesn't work for every brand though, um, but it's a really great way to add more interest to your image. So I hope this has given you guys some ideas to get those creative juices flowing when it comes to your own cosmetic product photography photo shoots. If you have any questions on anything I've covered today in this video, leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you. Otherwise, go and check out my other tutorials on my skincare, other cosmetic product photo shoots I've done, and also lighting if you wanna know more. Um, otherwise, if you love this video, please give it a thumbs up and go and subscribe to my channel. I release new videos every week unless I am super duper busy and swamped with client work or I'm on holiday. But if you want to connect with me more, go and follow me over on Instagram at Amanda Campiano. I share more behind the scenes tips and tricks on there and more about my own life and my journey in product photography. So I hope you enjoy this video and I will see you guys next week.